It's patch. It's a fully scaled, I think. Yeah, this is a nice fish. Right, we're here at Farlow's. I'm Lewis Dineshi. I'm Daniel Dineshi. Um, and today we're going to try and catch some fish off the surface. Down here at Farlow's, there's two lakes. There's Lake 1 and Lake 2. Uh, we're not too bothered today where we're going to try and get the opportunity from. We're going to have a look about and see if we can find an opportunity. The lake itself is uh, 26 acres, Lake 1, and Lake 2 is about 5 or 6 acres. And uh, it's packed full of stunning carp. So hopefully we can land on a, uh, a shoal and get a few uh, packing off the top. Right, well, we got here early this morning. We've just had a walk around and we've managed to find this swim. So that pays off when you get here early, you can get a swim. We're right by the shop, so we're local to everything. Just over my shoulders, we've got a few feeding, about five or six fish. And I've got Dan feeding off the um, geese and coots with some bread. So hopefully that'll take them off the spot. All I've got to do now is get a rod ready and bag an early fish. Right, so one of the advantages that I think me and Lewis have in most of our fishing, to be honest with you, is we tend to work as a team. And what that does is while Lewis is away now setting up the rod, I'm keeping the fish here and I'm also keeping the birds away from that area. So, you know, it's the birds home. I'm not going to deter them or get angry with them. I'm going to feed them off. We bought enough bait for them and the fish. We're going to feed them off and we're also going to uh, feed the fish at the same time while Lewis sets up. Right, although we're, there's two of us fishing, we're only going to use one rod. And the reason for that is we don't want to kill the swim. We're here to catch fish. And sometimes, if you go too crazy at it and you bring two rods or there's three of you, you're going to kill it before you even get started. So we'd much rather take it in turns and catch more fish than, you know, come in here and be, oh, I want one or you want one. So working together again is going to hopefully pay off and get us more bites. Right, so they're pack manning out in front of us. We've put it out, we've drifted amongst them and rather just sit there and wait and wait and wait, I wanna know why they're not doing it. And I think it's the hook bait. So what I'm gonna do, slight tweak, just make it a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna trim it away. So obviously what we're trying to do is we're trying to imitate a mixer or use surface bait. And what we also do, which I didn't mention earlier, but we'll probably touch on later, is we try and start with the bigger size mixers for that purpose, because sometimes when you go for the smaller sizes, they can become preoccupied. So when we start fishing like this, we always start with the bigger baits to try and see if we can keep them on the bigger shape baits. We just had to make a few changes to the hook bait and it's resulted in this. So sometimes they're not always having it. So we trimmed down the pop-up, that didn't go. Then we went to a fake mixer and this one literally a minute and it's gone straight away. They are pressured fish at Farlow, so they can be quite finicky. So yeah, if you just make the changes, sometimes it can result in quick bites. And also, as Daniel said earlier about teamwork, I'm playing this. And if you look to my left, Daniel's got the bait going in. So here, keep him feeding. And hopefully when I land this, we can cast again and another, have another fish. Yeah. <laughs> the rods are fairly soft, didn't they? So it feels really good. Yes, come on. Well done, mate. <laughs> I do.
So Lewis was just playing that one and he's just landed it. And that feeding I was doing straight away, I got a group going just off of where he hooked that fish and it's paid off. I've took the rod off of him as he's got that fish in, I've cast it out. The hook bait change has paid off. And within seconds, we're out there attached to another Farlow's car. You never know how long that feeding spell is going to be, so you need to take advantage of it. And this one, unfortunately, is well, not unfortunately, you've got to enjoy the fight, I guess. I think we'll try and slow it down a bit, even though the rod's doubled over. Right, so when you're surface fishing, it's great to have a you know a sort of balanced setup. One, when you're playing the fish as you're seeing. It's uh, very, very enjoyable. And two, it just puts a little bit, the, the right pressure on that hook hold. If you have too stiff a rod, you're going to really risk pulling that hook out of the fish. And we don't want to do that. Also, the light of the rod, you know, with this nature of fishing, you're moving about a lot. You're, uh, you're walking around, you're covering some ground, you know, if there's opportunities around the lake. And the lighter the gear, the better. Makes it easier for you. Keep her up. Keep her up. That's it. Yes. Come on. Put that, mate. Right. Here, hold that, mate. I'll just jump straight on this spawn, and then we get the fish done. It is hot, so we do want to do the fish straight away. I'm just going to put one spawn out, leave them to have another feed while we sort out the fish. That'll do. That will do. Right, here we have it. First one of the morning, 2310. A nice dark common from Farlow's Lake One. Daniel's got the one in the sling ready to be photoed. But yeah, what a fish. It's beautiful. And as you can see, the sun's out, it's a warm day. We get this fish straight back. Stunning fish. Right, so Lewis has had one and now I've had one. Slightly smaller, we're not going to wear her. It's hot, we're just going to get her back and they're still feeding now. So we're going to get her back very quickly and get the rod back out. Another Farlow's common. Thank you very much. So the setup we're actually using is really, really simple. There's nothing complicated to it. It's a simple knotless knot with a hair rig at the sort of business end. And then we've got three to four foot of hook link running up to a bubble float. In terms of the size of the hook and stuff, with surface fishing, you want to try and use as small as you can get away with really. But having said that, you don't want that to cost you fish. So we're fishing Farlow's Lake. It's quite weedy in places. It's that time of year where the weed really is up. So we're opting for, you know, a size 10, which is not the smallest size, but it's a size that we know we can rely on getting that fish in. And, you know, that's proven today. So the hook size, you know, is correct. If we would have gone slightly smaller, we may not have landed them. And also, you know, you don't want to go too small and risk leaving hooks in the fish. And that's the same with the line diameter. It's a 15 pound rule here. And that rule is in place for a reason. Because of the weed, I'm using a strong hook link. We're using 15 pound. It's a zig and floater hook link. So it stays up in the water. The last thing you want is your hook link sinking. I've actually used this hook link for years uh, before we were part of uh, the team at Fox. Um, we was using this product. And you know, it's something that has always been in my fishing. In terms of hook bait, we're using a mainline cell pop-up and we're trimming that down. And why we're trimming that down is to you know, look like the free offering, look like a biscuit on the top. And the reason we opt for a pop-up first before having to look at other alternatives is 
it's going to stay on longer. You know, you know it's not coming off on the cast and the buoyancy is there and it's easier to spot. And at the other end, we're using a surface uh, bubble float. Bubble floats are great. They're quite, you know, they go a long way, the XL. You're not going to struggle getting it far. And also, they're quite inconspicuous on the surface, so we're using them. The other thing that I find with these is we're not there going to go and strike and pull out of opportunities. These are really great at helping self-hook the fish. So don't be tempted to strike, let it go. As soon as you see the bubble moving, that's when we're hitting in because we know they're on. And to use these, they're really, really simple to set up. Like I said before, everything we're using is straightforward, really simple. All you do is you take the side bit out, it pops out, you fill it up with the water. I recommend going about three quarters full. That should be more than enough. And that will give you the, you know, the buoyancy as well so that it's actually going to do the self-hooking because you're leaving that little bit of air in there. So what I'm going to do now is actually show you how to tie the rig we're using. So the first part of the rig is the hook. I'm using a Zigan floater hook in size 10, micro barbed. It's a micro barbed rule. So the first thing I'm going to do is take one of them out of the packet, put that to the side just for a minute. I'm actually going to get the line then off of the reel and I'm actually going to tie a hair, loop knot and the hair. And I'm going to put the bait on first. A lot of people miss this point, but I'm actually going to put the bait on first because what that does is it allows me not to realize that it's too short or too long. And, you know, I've already tied the hook, so I can't adjust it later. So by putting the bait on first, I can get that hook in the correct place that I want it to sit. And then what we're going to do is we're going to thread the hook on from the top. We're going to do a knotless knot. And I just want the bait to come off the back of the hook. I don't want it right at the end of the the point because that's going to make the point a little bit lighter. I want it at the back of the hook, coming off the back of the hook, trying to hide that hook, disguise it and the bait kind of shield it from the fish seeing it. So I've made the hook link now and the last thing I'm going to do is attach the anti-tangle sleeve that comes in the bubble float package over that hook link and I'm also going to at this point take out the swivel that's also supplied in the bubble float package. What I'm going to do with that swivel is I'm going to attach it to my hook link then I'm going to push the bulk bubble onto my main line. I'm going to then attach my main line to the swivel, the top part of the swivel. And at the bottom of the bubble, there's a little pop hole, a plastic part where you just pop it in. And that's going to act as that shock system when you get a take. So it's going to stay in there. And when the fish bolts, that's going to give it that, you know, the equivalent to a lead on the bottom is the best way I can describe it. So we're not striking. We're waiting for that to go as if it was on an alarm. Obviously, we're watching and sitting on our hands as best we can at the same time. And that's the setup we're using today. Right, so now the weather's slightly changed. We haven't got flat calm, we've got cross threes, and that's taking the controllers quite quickly and also moving the fish. So we're adding a little bit of oil now to our bait. And that's, to be honest with you, normally we pre glag them anyway as well and soak them because it adds extra flavor and attracts the fish quicker. But what we're using it for now, the main purpose is just to flatten off the area so we can see what's happening amongst the ripples. And well, try and deter the ripples actually and get rid of them a little bit. Right, so it got, it's getting hotter now. And as it gets hotter through the day, it's not, ideal it gets more difficult but we've kept at it we had the two morning bites and now coming up to midday now we've got another bite um, but yeah like I say we've got to keep working and not give up one of the great things about surface fishing is you're actually seeing what's happening so you can make tweaks you know when you're on the bottom you don't exactly know so maybe you're a bit more you know sitting on your hands but when you're on the surface if you see that they're, they're around the float and they're taking other mixes freebies and they're not having yours you do tweak things a bit, you know? And that's one of the perks to be able to see. I'm sure you'd do the same if you could see on the bottom. It's only a little one, but just love catching carp, to be honest with you, I don't care what size they are. Get in. There you have it, third one of the session, midday now. I'm gonna get her back, because it's hot again. And we are gonna top up with some water, some sun cream, and get back at it. So it's turning into a productive day in this weather. You don't expect it to go crazy, but you know, it is becoming a productive day and hopefully it carries on into the afternoon and evening.
It's patch. It's a fully scaled, I think. Yeah, this is a nice fish. Huh? This is one of the fish I, I would have liked. This, this is a fish called patch that I actually helped when they had it delivered a few years ago stock. And I've always wanted it. And I think my brother's attached to it. Taking it in turns, eh? <laughs> Come on, Lewis. Oh, no. He's coming to... oh, oh, look at that. Oh. You know what? Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. How is your life? Make it work, even if it doesn't go right. Yeah. Right, so that is where everything's kicking off and people are doing certain jobs. And I'm going to say Lewis didn't put the net together properly. It was me, actually. But you know what? She's still in there. And she is a looker. If it's the one I'm thinking of, she's definitely a looker. I think it's a fully scaled with a patch at the back missing. When it was stopped, it was actually missing that. And this, if it's the right fish, is absolutely stunning. Let's get her out. <laughs> Sorry about the net, mate. I didn't try and knock it off, honestly. <laughs> Five, five. Happy with that? Absolutely over the moon with this one. Fish known as the patch, and it just pays off when you surface fish, you can pick out some of the rare ones. Yeah, it's a stunning fish, mate. 25, four. And yeah, it's one of the ones that we would have liked. Everyone says, you know, have you had them all from Farlows? No, we haven't. It's about some of these younger fish that people might not really know or take notice of. And this was one of the ones on the list. We've been lucky enough to catch it for the cameras. Buzzing, mate. Absolutely buzzing. <laughs> Get her back home. Mm. Yeah. Right, so we're at the end of our session now, and um, we managed four fish between us. Yeah, so four fish early on, before it got really hot. We didn't stop fishing, we're sweating buckets. <laughs> well, I don't know, we've probably been in five swims now, trying to get them going, trying to move around, but couldn't quite do it. But we're leaving here on a day session with four fish, oh, two man. of them absolutely stunning. Loved the common you had, the dark oh, common. Stunning fish. Then we had the patch mirror, which is a rare one, and one we haven't caught, so we're really happy. I hope that this video has give you a little bit of an insight into some of the surface fishing techniques we've used and maybe you can take them away and put them into your own fishing and it can help you put a few on the back. Good luck. <laughs>